Arr, and ahoy mateys of YouTube. Okay, so today I was supposed to make a video about Tamriel's most famous pirates, but uh, it turned out that as I was researching that many pirates of Tamriel have stories which are way too interesting to only be mentioned in a list-like video. So in the coming months I'll be making some pirate videos on the most famous pirates of Tamriel, and then I might do a wrap-up video where I can refer to these more elaborate videos. As I really don't want to do the more interesting pirates a disservice. Anyway, today let's talk about Fortunata Abdugal, pirate queen of the Gold Coast and once a successful merchant and then later pirate captain in the second era. And finally, totally legitimate governor of Anvil and the Gold Coast. So let's talk about her story. So Fortunata Abdugal, at the time of the Elder Scrolls Online, the leader of Anvil and a self-proclaimed governor over the independent Gold Coast region. She was born around the year 542 of the Second Era in a mercantile family on the Gold Coast, likely in the city of Kvach, as that's where her brother still resides at the time of the Elder Scrolls Online. In her early years, she started working as a lowly merchant for the Gold Coast Trading Company. At this time she proved her worth as a shrewd operator and a leader as she quickly rose through the ranks of the Gold Coast Trading Company. A few years before the start of the events of the Elder Scrolls Online, her skills and abilities led to her becoming one of the head magnates of the Gold Coast Trading Company, commandeering a quite sizable part of their fleet and supposedly using the ships more and more for her own personal gain rather than the trading company's business. However, at some point during her period as one of the head magnates, she decided that no more was to be gained from working for the trading company and she set out as a commodore of her own share of the company fleet on a supposed massive trading mission, which was to land the company massive amounts of profit, or so she promised them. This exodus of her part of the fleet took place at a time when the Gold Coast itself was pretty much in chaos. You see, parallel to her rise in the Gold Coast Trading Company, Varen Aquilarius, which is the Emperor before the events of the Elder Scrolls Online, had started his rebellion against the then Emperor, Emperor Leovic, and he launched an invasion from the Gold Coast into Cyrodiil, where he would end up driving the Emperor out and taking the Imperial Crown for himself. Uh, if you want to know more about this, watch my old video on the Riemann Emperors, where I cover his conquest near the end of the video. It's a pretty old video, narration is not as good as it is now, uh, but it's still pretty good in terms of information. Anyway, when he left the Gold Coast to rebel against the Empire, he left his home, County Kvach, in the hands of his nephew, Carolus Aquilarius, naming him Count of Kvach. Count Carolus, however, was attacked immediately by his uncle's former main rival, the then Count of Anvil, Eprim Varinus, who had declared Anvil's independence from the Empire when Varin left the region to take the leadership of the Empire. He wanted Kvarts to be part of his domain, so he launched a series of perilous attacks against Kvarts in an effort to conquer Kvarts. But all his expeditions failed, and Count Carolus held Kvarts for his uncle. However, this meant that Anvil was now seriously weakened as a result of multiple failed invasions, resulting in a lot of dead soldiers. You know who noticed this? Fortunata, because she and her merchant fleet had almost immediately after departing abandoned their vague trade mission and instead became a pirate fleet under Fortunata's leadership. And they forged a strong alliance with another massive pirate fleet, the Red Sails, who accepted Fortunata as their leader as well. Uh, how exactly that happened, uh, we don't know. Supposedly, I think they defeated the Red Sails and then, you know asked for their fealty, but we have no lore on how exactly Fortunata became pirate queen of both of these fleets, as she was then the pirate queen over her own fleet and the leader of the Red Sails, one of the biggest existing pirate fleets, so together they had a massive fleet. And then suddenly they heard of Anvil, the port city of her, of her home region, being poorly defended. So she did what any power-hungry pirate leader would do, she used her massive armada to invade Anvil and within a day she ousted the current count and placed herself on the throne of the county, immediately also declaring herself governor of the entire Gold Coast region, even if she did not truly hold anything other than the city of Anvil at that point, and her power base there even was still very shaky. 
But as we know from her quick rise through the Gold Coast Trading Company, she is a shrewd operator and it turned out that when she had to, she also knew how to be patient and play, play the long game, as the first thing that she did when in power in Anvil was declare it a free port where anyone could come and trade. She also promised the pirates all around Tamriel that they would find a safe haven for trading goods that they stole from Elder Scrolls Online's three main alliances in Anvil, while at the same time promising her own massive pirate armada a share of the wealth that they would make from taxes and increased docking fees if they kept supporting her. This made for a system where Anvil became a massively popular port for small businesses and trading companies from independent parts of Tamriel, because while Fortunata took Anvil, the three main alliances acted upon the Empire's weakness after Emperor Varun's disappearance in the Soulburst, and they invaded Cyrodiil, which is basically the whole PvP area of the Elder Scrolls Online, where the three alliances fight against each other. This war meant that all three alliances had large supply lines, often overseas. These supply lines were heavily raided by pirates. As Fortunata promised, they could then sell these goods that they stole in Anvil. Thus Anvil became an extremely popular market with independent and non-aligned individuals and factions who all bought their goods in Anvil, as goods were sold in Anvil for extremely low prices. Goods that were of course stolen from all the three main alliances, so the Abnard Pact, the Daggerfall Covenant and the Altmeri Dominion. This system of taxing those sales and increasing docking costs for non-pirates made Fortunata and her pirates extremely wealthy, giving her the opportunity to consolidate her rule around the Anvil, while also harassing other nobles like Corollas Aquilarius as her main rival uh, to all swear fealty to her. At this time her court, or whether you can call it a court, became extremely hedonistic with chaotic pirate parties in the palace almost every day with excessive drinking and according to some sources a lot of drugs and even intercourse. Fortunata even started holding exotic animals like lions as pets in the palace and her pirates spread the most outlandish stories of her supposed deeds before she became governor among the population, most of them either fiction or accomplishments of other long dead pirates. But Despite this eccentric lifestyle and this propaganda among the population, she did not lose her focus of subjugating the entire region to her will. For example, she created a spy network around the region which fed her information on anyone who's anyone in the region and to find weaknesses on them and to find weaknesses on rivals and to find out who may be about to betray her. In these months after the invasion, basically all the nobles in and around Anvil swore fealty to her. The three merchant houses of Anvil, which previously sort of ruled the city, also swore fealty to her. And even the entire Gold Coast Trading Company, which she previously worked for, came under her almost direct control eventually, as she ruled with an iron fist and used her pirate cronies to bully everybody into submission. Count Corollas, however, kept resisting. He would not swear fealty to a pirate queen. but. The pirate queen was clever, and she started to bleed Kvarts dry at this time. Fortunata had mercenaries and pirates hound all the trade routes and the supply lines leading to Kvarts until the situation there became quite critical. But even then, Count Corollas, who is quite rightly described in the Elder Scrolls Online as basically the only leader in the Gold Coast who actually tries his best for the people, would not yield to what would be basically an iron fist rule of his people with heavy taxes. But Count Corollas could not really do much as Governor Fortunata slowly used her newly gained wealth from the taxes to build a quite massive pirate army and several months before we visit the Gold Coast as players in the Elder Scrolls Online, she started her invasion of Kavaj. She sent the Anvil Guard, the last remaining soldiers of the previous Count whom she always suspected of one day revolting against her, to Kvarch along the Gold Road to take Kvarch. Meanwhile her pirates hid themselves in caves, ruins, forests and all other places around the countryside. When Count Corollas sent out his men to fight the incoming army, the Anvil Guard got completely slaughtered by them. And just as the Kvarch army thought that they had been victorious and were about to return to Kvarč, the gigantic pirate force, which had waited for the Anvil Guard to be slaughtered, charged in, outnumbering the Kavaj army 6 to 1. The unorganized rabble of pirates made quick work of the trained guards, and this left Count Corollas without an army, and forced him to swear fealty to the pirate queen. But before he did, he forged an uneasy alliance with the power-hungry leader of the Order of the Hour, which is a sort of radical akatosh worshipping temple army, to maintain the walls and street of Kavart so the pirates would not be able to enter. This made it so that he had to officially swear fealty, so pay the taxes to Fortunata, but he was able to keep the pirates out of his walls, which really annoyed Fortunata. 
but it put him in a situation where Count Corollas was now caught between two power hungry individuals essentially. The Order of the Hour Leader and Fortunata the Pirate Queen, both of whom wanted full control over Kavach, and he was basically the only thing standing in their way. This essentially is the setup for the Elder Scrolls Online's Dark Brotherhood questline. I won't go over all of it or over any of the details, but I will give some spoilers, so if you still want to play that questline, well, stop watching this video. Giving you the chance now. Anyway, during this period, the Dark Brotherhood became more and more active in the Gold Coast. And at the same time, Fortunata was extremely annoyed at the fact that Count Corollas refused to let her men into Kvarch. So she hired the Dark Brotherhood, aka you as the assassin, to assassinate one of Corollas' closest associates to bully him into submission. Interestingly enough, while you do that, you find that Cor Count Corollas, despite his clear disgust at the process, is performing the Black Sacrament to call upon the Dark Brotherhood. And he then hires you, as the assassin, to assassinate Fortunata to get rid of one of his two main ri rivals in the region. So, as you go back to Fortunata to report your success on bullying Count Corollas into submission by assassinating one of his men, you poison her drink and she falls dead off the balcony of the palace, thus ending the Pirate Queen's rule of the Gold Coast in quite an anticlimactic way. However, in the Dark Brotherhood quest, this opens up a way for the Order of the Hour to then grab absolute power as they pardon all of Fortunata's pirates if they work for them. This does not last long however as you eventually end up also assassinating the leaders of the Order of the Hour and Count Corollas eventually remains alive and rules Kvarch and presumably also Anvil or he instates a new count there. Resulting in a happy ending where the Red Sails and Fortunatus Pirates likely just disband. We don't really know what happens. So, a good ending, sort of, anyway. So, that was the story of Fortunata Abdugal, the Pirate Queen. A story which, in my opinion, definitely deserved its own video instead of having it mashed up with other pirates. Um, if you want to know more about other pirates, there I made a video on Cyrus, uh, which is the protagonist of the Elder Scrolls Redguard, who was kind of a pirate. Um, that video also has not that great narration, but it's in the description if you want to watch it. Anyway, I do hope that you learned something today, and if you did, I hope that you will consider returning for the next Elder Scrolls lore video. But before I end this video, allow me to thank my top Patreon supporters, Mr. Bernardo Binda, Gabriel Binda, Polarized Poutine, Athena Iotis, King Chris, Bulge, Scramble the Scrolls, Doji, Fenrir, Sword of Bushido, Sar Mikael, and Mr. Christmas. It's thanks to these people and all the others on screen that this channel stays alive, and for that I'm very grateful. That said, I am extremely tired, a lot has happened, and I really hope that I'll see you all in the next Elder Scrolls lore video, hopefully next week, if I have time. Bye-bye. <laughs>